chemical neurotransmission can be described in many ways such as anatomical chemical or electrical the anatomical basis of neurotransmission is the neurons and the connection between them called synapses sometimes also called the anatomically addressed nervous system synapses can form on many parts of a neuron not just the dendrites as exodendritic synapses but also on the soma as exosomatic synapses and even at the beginning and at the ends of axons as exoaxonic synapses such synapses are said to be asymmetric since communication is structurally designed to be in one direction only that is enterograde from the axon of the first neuron to the dendrite soma or axon of the second neuron when these neurons malfunction behavioral symptoms may occur and when drugs alter the neuronal function behavioral symptoms may be relieved worsened or even produced neurons have unique structures depending upon where in the brain they are located and what their function is all neurons have a cell body known as the soma and are set up structurally to receive information from other neurons through an elaborate branching tree of dendrites and sometimes via spines on these dendrites Neurons are also set up structurally to send information to other neurons via an axon that forms presynaptic terminals as the axon passes by such as the en passant rule in chess or as the axon ends that is the presynaptic axon terminals complementary to the anatomically addressed nervous system is the chemically addressed nervous system which forms the chemical basis of neurotransmission namely how chemical signals are coded decoded and transduced and sent along the way Now let's see the classic synaptic neurotransmission. Stimulation of a presynaptic neuron by neurotransmitter light, drugs, hormones or nerve impulses causes electrical impulses to be sent to its axon terminal. These electrical impulses are then converted into chemical messengers and released to stimulate the receptors of the postsynaptic neurons. Thus, although communication within a neuron can be electrical, communication between neurons is chemical now let's see the principles of chemical neurotransmission sometimes neurotransmitters are very similar to drugs and have been called god's pharmacopoeia for example it is well known that the brain makes its own morphine that is beta endorphins and its own marijuana that is anandamide neurotransmission classic retrograde and volume The classic neurotransmission begins with an electrical process by which the neurons send electrical impulses from one part of the cell to another part of the same cell via their axons. These electrical impulses in the first neuron is converted to chemical signal at the synapse in a process known as excitation secretion coupling, the first stage of chemical transmission. This occurs predominantly but not exclusively in one direction. Neurotransmission continues in the second neuron either by converting the chemical information from the first neuron back into an electrical impulse or perhaps more elegantly by the chemical information from the first neuron triggering a cascade of further chemical changes within the second neuron to change the neuron's molecular and genetic functioning. Postsynaptic neurons can also talk back to their presynaptic neurons. They can do this via retrograde neurotransmission. Chemicals produced specifically as retrograde neurotransmitters at some synapses include endocannabinoids also known as the endogenous marijuana. Another one is the gaseous neurotransmitter nitric oxide. Some neurotransmission does not need a synapse at all and is called volume neurotransmission or non-synaptic diffusion neurotransmission. Chemical messengers sent by one neuron to another can spill over to sites distant to the synapse by diffusion. Thus neurotransmission can occur at any compatible receptor within the diffusion radius of the neurotransmitter. Modifying volume neurotransmission may indeed be a major way in which several psychotropic drugs work. A good example is dopamine action in the prefrontal cortex. Here there are very few dads to terminate the action of dopamine. Dopamine is free to spill over from that synapse and diffuse to neighboring dopamine receptors to stimulate them. even though there are no synapses at these spillover sites another important example is at the sites of autoreceptors on monoamine neurons 
at the somatodendritic end of the neuron are autoreceptors that inhibit the release of neurotransmitter from the axonal end of the neurons there is no synapse here but neurotransmitter leaked from the neuron upon its own neuroreceptors the nature of a neuron's regulation by its somatodendritic autoreceptors is a subject of intense interest and is theoretically linked to the mechanism of action of many antidepressants excitation secretion coupling electrical impulses open ion channels both the voltage sensitive sodium channels and the voltage sensitive calcium channels by changing the ionic charge across neuronal membranes as sodium flows into the presynaptic nerve through the sodium channels in the axon membrane the electrical charge of the action potential moves along the axon until it reaches the presynaptic nerve terminal where it also opens calcium channels as calcium flows into the presynaptic nerve terminal it causes synaptic fascicles anchored to the inner membrane to spill their chemical contents into the synapse excitation secretion coupling is thus the way that the neuron transduces an electrical stimulus into a chemical event signal transduction cascades thus neurotransmission can also be seen as communication from the genome of the presynaptic neuron to the genome of the postsynaptic neuron and involves numerous molecules starting with neurotransmitter first messenger and proceeding to second third fourth and more messengers the initial events occur in less than a second but the long term consequences are mediated by downstream messengers that take hours to days to activate and can last for many days or even the lifetime of a synapse or neuron this is somewhat akin to a molecular pony express with specialized molecules acting as a sequence of riders handing on the message to the next specialized molecule until the message has reached a functional destination such as a gene expression or activation of otherwise sleeping and inactive molecules first messengers that are neurotransmitter activates the production of a chemical second messenger that in turn activates a third messenger namely an enzyme known as a kinase that adds a phosphate group to a fourth messenger that's a protein to create phosphoproteins in another signal transduction cascade a first messenger neurotransmitter opens an ion channel that allows calcium to enter the neuron and act as the second messenger for this cascade system calcium then activates a different third messenger namely an enzyme known as a phosphatase that removes phosphate groups from the fourth messenger phosphoprotein and this reverses the action of the third messenger from previous cascade the balance between the kinase and the phosphatase activity signaled by the balance between the two neurotransmitters that activate each of them determines the degree of downstream chemical activity four of the most important signal transduction cascades in the brain are g protein linked systems and channel linked systems hormone linked systems and neurotropin linked systems g protein linked and ion channel linked cascades are triggered by neurotransmitters many of the psychotropic drugs used in clinical practice today target one of these two signal transduction cascades forming a second messenger each of the four signal transduction cascades passes its message from an extracellular first messenger to an intracellular second messenger in the case of g protein linked systems the second messenger is a chemical but in the case of ion channel linked systems the second messenger can be an ion such as calcium for some hormone linked systems a second messenger is formed when the hormone finds a receptor in the cytoplasm and binds to it to form a hormone nuclear receptor complex and for neurotrophins a complex set of various second messengers exist the g protein linked system has four key elements to this second messenger system first is the first messenger neurotransmitter itself the second is a receptor for the neurotransmitter that belongs to the neurotransmitter superfamily in which all have the structure of seven transmembrane regions the third is a g protein capable of binding both to certain conformations of the neurotransmitter receptor and to an enzyme system that can synthesize the second messenger and finally fourth the enzyme system itself for the second messenger the first step is the neurotransmitter binding to its receptor 
this changes the conformation of the receptor so that it can now fit with the G protein. Next comes the binding of the G protein to this new conformation of the receptor neurotransmitter complex. Now the G protein's conformation changes so that now it's capable of binding to an enzyme that synthesizes the second messenger. Finally, the enzyme, for example in this case adenylate cyclase, binds to the G protein and synthesizes cyclic AMP which serves as the second messenger beyond the second messenger to phosphoprotein messengers. There are two major targets of signal transduction. These are phosphoproteins and genes. Many of the intermediate targets along the way to the genes are phosphoproteins, such as the fourth messenger phosphoproteins, that lie dormant in the neurons until signal transduction wakes them up and they spring into action. One signal transduction pathway can activate a third messenger kinase through second messenger cyclic AMP. Whereas, another signal transduction pathway can activate a third messenger phosphatase through second messenger calcium. In the case of kinase activation, two copies of the second messenger target each regulatory unit of the dormant or sleeping protein kinase. When two copies of cyclic AMP bind to each regulatory unit, the regulatory unit disassociates from the enzyme. The dimer dissociates into two copies of the enzyme and the protein kinase is now activated. The activation of a third messenger kinase adds phosphatase to a variety of phosphoproteins such as ligand-gated ion channels, voltage-gated ion channels and various regulatory enzymes which all can act as fourth messengers. Meanwhile, the nemesis of protein kinase is also forming, namely a protein phosphatase. Another first messenger is opening an ion channel here allowing second messenger calcium to enter which activates the phosphatase enzyme calcineurin. In the presence of calcium, the calcineurin becomes activated and it's ready to rip phosphatase group of the fourth messenger phosphoproteins such as the ligand-gated ion channels, voltage-gated ion channels and the various regulatory enzymes. The activation of this fourth messenger can change the synthesis of neurotransmitters, can alter neurotransmitter release, can change the conductance of ions and generally maintain the chemical neurotransmission apparatus in either a state of readiness or dormancy. Beyond the second messenger to a phosphoprotein cascade triggering gene expression. The ultimate cellular function that neurotransmission often seeks is to modify the gene expression, either turning a gene on or turning a gene off. The fourth messenger CREB is a cyclic AMP response element binding protein, a transmission factor in the cell nucleus capable of activating expression of genes especially a type of gene known as the immediate genes or immediate early gene. The activated protein kinase A can translocate or move into the cell nucleus and stick to a phosphate group on CREB, thus activating this transcription factor and causing the nearby gene to become activated. This leads to gene expression first as RNA and then as the protein coded by the gene. Genes are also the ultimate target of the hormone signal transduction cascade. Hormones such as estrogen, thyroid and cortisol act at cytoplasmic receptors, bind them and produce a hormone nuclear receptor complex that translocates to the nucleus, finds elements in the gene that it can influence called hormone response elements or HREs and then acts as transcription factors to trigger activation of nearby genes. How Neurotransmission Triggers Gene Expression Signal transduction has a message encoded with chemical information from the neurotransmitter receptor complex that is passed along from a molecular rider to another molecular rider until the message is delivered to the appropriate phosphoprotein mailbox or DNA mailbox in the postsynaptic neurons genome. The human genome contains approximately 20,000 to 30,000 genes located within 3 million base pairs of DNA and 23 chromosomes. 97% of this was called junk DNA because it does not code for proteins, but it is now known that these sections of DNA are critical for regulating whether or not a gene is expressed or is silent. The Molecular Mechanism of Gene Expression Most genes have two regions, a coding region and a regulatory region, with enhancers and promoters of gene transcription. The coding region is the direct template for making its corresponding RNA. This DNA can be transcribed into its RNA with the help of an enzyme called RNA polymerase. However, it must be activated or it won't work. 
luckily the regulatory region of the gene can make this happen it has an enhancer element and a promoter element which can initiate gene expression with the help of transcription factors activated transcription factors bind to the regulatory region of the gene this in turn activates rna polymerase activating the coding part of the gene transcribing itself onto the mrna which translate itself into the corresponding protein some genes are known as immediate early genes they have weird names such as c june and c fos and belong to a family called leucine zippers which are a type of transcription factors these genes functions as rapid responders to the neurotransmitters input like the special ops troops the fifth messengers june and fos partner together to form a leucine zipper which is the sixth messenger this can lead to the activation of genes to make anything you can think of from enzymes receptors to structural proteins thus june and fos serve to wake up a much larger army of inactivated genes with individual late soldier genes which can now be drafted into active gene duty summary once the second messenger cyclic amp is formed from its first messenger neurotransmitter it can interact with protein kinase which is the third messenger the third messenger's job is to activate the transcription factor which is the fourth messenger by phosphorylating them it does this by traveling straight to the cell nucleus transcription factors will bind to genes and cause protein synthesis in this case the product of an immediate early gene which functions as the fifth messenger two such gene products bind together to form yet another activated transcription factor and this is the sixth messenger finally the sixth messenger causes the expression of a late gene product which could be thought of as a seventh messenger protein product of the activated gene this late gene product then mediates some biological response the whole process can be summarized in the following flow chart epigenetics Epigenetics is a parallel system that determines whether any given gene is actually made into specific RNA and protein or if it is instead ignored or silenced. If the genome is a lexicon of all protein words, then epigenome is a story resulting from arranging the words into a coherent tale. The character of a cell is fundamentally determined by its chromatin. a substance composed of nucleosomes which are octet of proteins called histones around which dna is wrapped epigenetic control is achieved by modifying the structure of chromatin chemical modifications that can do this include not only methylation but also acetylation and phosphorylation and other processes that are regulated by neurotransmission drugs and the environment when dna or histones are methylated this compacts the chromatin and acts to close off access to molecular transcription factors histones are methylated by enzymes called histone methyl transferases and this is reversed by enzymes called histone demethylases demethylation and acetylation do just the opposite they decompress the chromatin as though a molecular gate has been opened and thus transcription factors can get to the promoter region of the genes and activate them